Good evening, good evening.
on my knee. All right, we'll take a few more minutes. Uh, we're slow coming in tonight, so I'll play one more song. Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome, welcome. Hey, Sister Sister Brown. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll take about just five more minutes, maybe. No, three minutes. Three minutes. What's up, Dacker? All right, good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. It's such a blessing to be gathered in this uh, virtual space again. Uh, I pray that uh, this uh, this gathering tonight finds you all uh, finds you doing well uh, and your spirits well. And if not, I pray that your spirits will be uplifted after we finish our, our study and our gathering on uh, tonight. Uh, I know that uh, that we are all, if you're in our area, the DFW area, we're about to experience some, some cold weather. And, uh, you know, you have mixed feelings about it, cold weather over a prolonged period of time. But I, I love the cold weather. I just try to be thankful for God, for the rain, for the sunshine, for the cool, for the seasons of life. And it's just a lot like the lives in which we live. Seasons come and seasons go. And we just try to be grateful in it all and try to adjust through it all. So, we just give God the glory and the honor. We're to continue praying for everyone uh, who uh, is under the sound of my voice and even those who aren't. Continue to pray for one another. That prayer is one of the most powerful vehicles that we have uh, to get from earth to glory and to be able to uh, pray for one another is, is really a powerful thing. As I said before, we don't need more pity. We need more prayer. Uh, pit, uh, pity uh, makes, us, uh, makes us weak. 
prayer makes us strong. And so we're thankful that we can gather together as a church. Welcome to everybody, no matter where you're watching from. It's so great that we have uh, so many regulars who watch us from so many different places. And no matter where you're watching us from tonight, uh, just know you're a part of our family. And so we want you to, at the end of the uh, broadcast tonight, to plug in where you're from so we can keep up uh, with you and just welcome you uh, here. And I'm sure that uh, I always appreciate your comments that are uh, that you put in throughout the course of the class. It gives us some similitude of actually being able to uh, interact with each other. So we're so glad uh, that we're able to do so on tonight. So let's continue to pray for one another and give and give thanks. Remember those who uh, attempt to come on Sunday. <laughs> I know it's supposed to be really cold. We're going to do red. Sunday is red and it's for uh, awareness of heart awareness and uh, heart disease is one of the, the killers uh, in the country that's hidden and secret and silent. And isn't that a lot like the spiritual man that the heart uh, is a tricky thing and who can really discern it? Uh, the heart is deceitful, the scripture teaches us, and we've got to continue. The heart work is hard work. Uh, and when you're working on your heart, uh, it's hard work because we, we spend so much time on other people's hearts that we realize that ours is deteriorating and ours is not what it it, it, it should not be. Uh, that's one of the things I've asked God to uh, to move me um, from a place where I tried to spend too much time interpreting uh, why people do what they do. Uh, it's your job to work on your heart, man. Every man is going to have a reward for his or her labor. So um, we are going to uh, just reflect on that as well. Let's go ahead and pray. I want to jump right into what we have on the night. So thank you guys for, for being here. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your word for your word is power. Your word uh, blesses us and it changes us from the inside out. We're thankful that we have this avenue to be able to come together tonight and study. May we be reminded of your eternal promises that are able to strengthen us during these difficult, dark days that we're in. And we just thank you for your protection, for keeping us and for guiding us. May we ever lean on you for all that we need. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So tonight, uh, I want to Last few weeks we dealt with uh, we dealt with uh, wounds and we dealt with the vulnerability, but you know, all these all these lessons are in context uh, with with the scripture, and I'm finding so much that's in scripture uh, that that's that's really there to uh, enrich our lives. I mean, being a part of the church and part of the body, y'all, is not just about uh, making it to heaven. You got to learn how to live down here. You got to learn how to get through what you're going through down here. And so tonight I want to use for a subject, developing in the dark rooms of life. And uh, I think if you're not developing, as we say, what are you doing to develop oneself, to develop in the dark rooms of life, and hopefully to make us reconsider how we look at what we're going through. Uh, and I think that's in everything. If you want to be successful, it's all about perspective. How am I looking at what I'm going through. So developing in the dark rooms of life. And of course, if, if you were thinking about this, I'm going to metaphorically compare it to a photographer who takes beautiful images and enters into the dark room, the lab, so to speak, to do some work on uh, their, their images in order to perfect them and to present them to the world. But before they are able to present them to the world, uh, they must go into the dark room to develop it. And for many of us, I think we believe my mother and I were having a great conversation. If you're watching tonight, mom, hey, we're having a great conversation tonight. And we were talking about faith earlier today. And one of the things that words that we take out of context when dealing with faith is we think faith means that I'm certain about everything. You know, faith doesn't mean certainty. Uh, what happened? What, when do we start teaching that type of Christianity where uh, God lays out everything for me? I'm supposed to be sure about where I'm at in life right now. I'm supposed to understand everything that's unfolding and for my lives. And, and God's, and you know, the, the psalmist says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Sometimes God just shows us what's right in front of us. He didn't always show us the whole pathway. Uh, and we don't, you, you know, as Dr. King says, you don't have to see the whole staircase to take a step. You know, God doesn't reveal it to us. But, and so we've taught this faith that that I know everything that gonna conspire, uh, transpire in my life and I have to see it 
but but faith is not like that. Faith is in the spiritual realm dealing with God. There's a lot of uncertainty. I think if all of us were quite honest with ourselves tonight, there's so much about God we don't know. And the more you get into the word, the more you realize that I don't really know God. We throw around a lot of political jargons and, and political jargon, scriptural jargons, and we say a lot of things. But when the rubber really hits the road and our faith really gets tested, a lot of times it exposes uh, who we really are. And when you talk about faith, you got to also talk about acceptance. One of, the, one of the growth processes in all of our lives, somebody says, why are you strong? Because I accept. I accept God's judgment. I accept that there are some things in life I can't control, like the weather. I accept that there's some people that I can't change. I accept who I am, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I accept that death is part of living. I accept uh, these things in life. And when you can accept it, uh, then you can trust in God and then you can work through the uncertainties. And we're, start, we're, we're always trying to look for certainty in life. Ain't nothing certain. That's why I said Sunday, we plan for retirement only to never make it there. You know, when you grow up, you little girl, you plan to have a big wedding, white lace and, and, and chocolate cake and <laughs> feed them cake and throw on the garter and you live happily ever after for 50 years and life don't work out like that. You think someone is going to be around your whole life or maybe you thought this was going to be your career. God leads you the next direction. There's nothing certain in life, y'all. And so we've got to look at the stage, the stages that we're in as, as God is still developing me. That's how you work through it because I think we're frustrated because we thought we were already supposed to arrive at our destination. When in fact, where you actually could be right now could be the de developmental stage of where it is that God really wants you to go. So I'm going to say tonight, the first one, I'm developing. I have not yet arrived. I've not yet scratched the surface on what God can do with me and what God is going to do for me. All right. So so I'm developing. I'm, I'm not there. When you, What you see of me, uh, what you saw of me uh, uh, last week, that person is gone. I'm rolling forward to a better person developing. And, and sometimes there are dark periods. 2020 was a very dark period for the nation. We've seen a little bit of sunlight, but I like to think that God was developing. Even as we're sitting here right now tonight, instead of a building, I don't worry about that. I'm afraid about that. God is developing us. Uh, so what, don't cry about the dark. The dark does a lot of things to people. And I want to look at that tonight. We're afraid of the dark. And you know who are afraid of the dark most time? It's, it's, it's children. <laughs> They're afraid to go to sleep in the dark because they're afraid something's going to get them. And we're the same way in life in dark places. We're afraid that, that things are going to happen. And sometimes these things that, that we think are going to happen. Y'all have heard me say this a thousand times before. Half of the things you thought were going to happen to you never happen. And you spend a lot of time worried about them and consumed about them. Why? Because worrying about them doesn't make them go away. A word about them doesn't bring them on. So we think we got it all figured out. When in fact, as the as 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 uh, Solomon said, vanity of vanities, all is vanities. No matter how much money you got, whether you're rich, poor, smart, dumb, male, female, you got one destination, and that's the grave. And I, I think when you look at it, at the end of the day, all is all is vanity. Even you staying up late at night worrying about it, it is vanity. Uh, even you get in arguments with people trying to change their minds and you say they don't believe you. That's that's vanity as well. Even trying to figure out and understand everything about God. That's vanity as well. God has only revealed part of himself to us. As Paul says, we know in part and we prophesied in part. But when that which is purpose, per, uh, perfect as is come, that which is in part will be done away with. You know, it's like looking in a, in a mirror and you can see an image, but you're not quite sure exactly what it looks like. So we always walking around. We were talking about that saying we know God and we know what God is doing and we know what God is happening. But the truth of the matter is you really don't know nothing in the dark room. I want to look at this text uh, in Hebrews chapter uh, chapter uh, 12 and about verse number six. Uh, I want to go there real quick. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number six. The Bible says, and I don't think I put this on there uh, correctly. And he says, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and he scourges every son who he receives. Now, no chastening seems too joyful for the present, but it seems painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Look at the words that are used here. Uh, in Hebrews 12, 6 and verse number 11, there are actually the words that you can see that kind of connect to 
what uh, the way that a child, a father would interact with the child. So the Lord disciplines those who he loves, right? Scourges, that's a stronger word. <laughs> you know, Jesus was scourged by the Roman soldiers. Uh, and, and, and sometimes in life, that's a hard thing for us to set because he, even though he is the loving, gracious father, sometimes he purposely disciplines us, chastises us. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, the parents just say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. I don't know how I'm the one getting the whooping, but he says it's painful in the present. Nevertheless, afterwards, it yields peaceful fruit. I, I don't doubt had it not been for the discipline of my parents, I don't know where I would have been. Discipline is what makes you become accountable for your decisions and for your choices. And God uh, holds us accountable. And sometimes we do like to cry when it when it was our, it was us who left God. And I say this before, and I'll say it again, if you feel a guilty distance from God or you feel distance from God, it's not that he left you. It's probably because you left him. As I said Sunday, the, the, the hog pen don't always give you back. Sometimes you can go too far and stay too long. And uh, sometimes these aren't dark rooms where God has put you to develop it. Sometimes these are just hog pens that we've wandered into and we're finding a, a difficult time of getting ourselves out. But even in those hog pens and pig pens of life, God can still develop us. He says afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit. The fruit is the objective of righteousness. That's a right relationship with God. And then he used the word, those who have been trained by it. You cannot be fit without training. You can be spiritually fit without training. Training consistently, training hard, training with the purpose in mind. He says the discipline of God trains you. And I think about this when I am feeling like, why? <laughs> what is the reason for this? I have to trust that maybe I might be experiencing the discipline of God because after all, I don't act right all the time. I know y'all do, but I don't. I'm not on my game all the time. I don't think the right things all the time. I don't always say what I should do. Sometimes I, I get frustrated with God and frustrated with things and, and God has to discipline. Sometimes God will whoop me and sh uh, get me back in line. Sometimes God has to put me in a dark room uh, in order for me to continue to develop. Meant, develop. Romans chapter five and verse number three is another one you can look at tonight. Not only so, but we rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces what? Perseverance and perseverance produces character and character produces hope. I want you to know tonight there is an end game to your developmental room. There is a purpose to what God does. God doesn't do anything haphazardly. God doesn't do things for his own entertainment, but he does it for your growth. Perseverance, it produces character. There's That's the reason why some people are low character because they ain't ever been through nothing. They never persevered through nothing. They never look at where they are and say, God, help me to learn the lessons in this situation. And character produces hope. And he says, hope does not disappoint us. Why? Because God has poured out his love in our hearts by whom? By the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Again, I think it's important to reiterate. Uh, when you are having a power outage in your life, if you're having a power outage in your life right now, you can't seem to smile, you can't seem to rejoice, you can't seem to be happy, you feel disconnected from reality, you're confused, it's because you have disconnected from the source. We as ministers, you know, there's, uh, my brother, my brothers could tell you, me as men, we get tired sometimes, you know, I'm not to the point where I feel like I want to quit or give up, but you know why? Uh, it's, it's not because... Uh, uh, things aren't hard or difficult at times, but because as long as I stay connected to the Holy Spirit, I always have power. The moment I begin to depend upon myself, I begin to get weak. I begin to become fragile. I begin to become hypersensitive to everything that's said and done. I'll begin to feel a weight on my shoulders because I'll think that I am the savior of the church and savior of people and that I can help everybody and it's up to me and, and I'm not supposed to bear some of these things. And it's and when I become dependent upon myself more than the power of the Holy Spirit at work in me, then I'll see myself depleted. So somebody says, I'm barely put putting along. That's because you've been trying to do it yourself. And I've got to reiterate that tonight. So we fix our eyes uh, on not what is seen, but what Paul says, uh, continue that verse. We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen for the things which we see are temporary, but the things which we can't see are eternal. So what you see is you see your trial, but what you don't see is what God is trying to get 
out of you from that trial. <laughs> Everything that you can see is temporary. Everything that's tangible, you can touch, taste, smell, feel, is temporary. But all those spiritual things that, that really matter, you really can't see them. It's like baptism. The Bible describes baptism. Paul describes it as an operation. It's an operation that you go down in the water and to come up in a new man. It's not the physical water that washes your sins away. Uh, baptism is not right? The putting away the filth of the flesh, but it's an answer of a good conscience. You can't see anyone's conscience. It's an answer of a good conscience toward God. It, it says that I am joining myself with him. I'm being obedient to the commandment. I'm being translated into his kingdom, and you can't see the operation. God performs the operation. You can see the action, but you can't see the operation. So a lot of times in life, you look at me, and you might see the actions or you might see the actions that are done against you, but you don't see how God is operating. God is always operating. God is working. Do I have a witness tonight that knows God is operating in your life right now as you speak in the dark room that you are in? And you can be in a light room, a light place. It feels like, but in a dark place. The Lamentations writer talks about this. He says, he has set me in dark places and it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of of the Lord. There's an incubation process when you talk about growth. And I'm going to get to that here in a second. I'm going to tie this all up uh, really good. Uh, and I, I want to, um, I'm going to really, really try to tie this up to, to make some sense uh, for us uh, here on tonight. I think when you think of, I was thinking about the, uh, I was thinking about going back in the day and, and I used to talk to those kids who used to be uh, uh, on yearbook. And one of the things they, they learned, I was trying to think of an example that I had of somebody who who knew this and uh, they they took the pictures and they actually developed them right there in the school darkroom. And so uh, they were telling me that they use this this uh, this illumination of a special red light and the film would somehow be transferred from the paper. Then the paper would be dipped in, in several trays holding chemical solutions. All right. As the photos were moved from tray to tray, you begin to see an image begin to emerge. The image began to emerge. The process took a lot of time and a lot of care. And I remember uh, uh, saying that that almost I've seen, you know, magical in a way. Right. To see the images slowly begin to appear over some time. And uh, I remember the teacher was always upset because the, 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 the photographers would get upset as well. Somebody opened the door while they were working. You know why? Stay with me because too much light would flood in and mess up every piece of film in which uh, they have been laboring to produce. And uh, many pictures had been ruined uh, and they had to learn through experience that you got to keep it uh, in the dark. All of the money and all the film and all the time that the photographers had logged in on their assignments were going to waste. Deadlines for getting the yearbook pages uh, had to be pushed back if some of those photos weren't there, but what about uh, who won the homecoming game and uh, the, the 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 party of prom after proms and all those photographic memories that they took could never be recaptured again. And so this was an important part in the darkness of that dark room. It made the proper development of those pictures possible so that everything else necessary to produce the end result, which was a yearbook was made possible. So I want us to know y'all that God, does the same thing. God allows dark rooms to develop us. See, when we're experiencing the darkness of financial reversals or financial hardships or failures or, or job losses or any kind of strenuous challenge that you might be dealing with tonight, sickness is a dark room, disappointment is a dark room, uh, loneliness is a dark room, separations is a dark room, death is a dark room. We need to look at things uh, through the red, but the red is not the red light, but the blood of Jesus. And, you know, like, like the photographers, we wait patiently inside of the dark room and you watch as God takes his time and care to develop the picture of your life that he's taken. Don't rush through any of the stages of your life. You got to endure every chemical. I wish y'all stay with me tonight. You got to deal every chemical uh, that, that that you're thrown in. And only when the process is complete that you can be fully developed. I like to believe that there's some people over here that are 50 plus that aren't fully developed. And you only be ready uh, when just the right pages of your life are developed. 
And I think the image that that comes forth is the image that that is really the image of his son. <laughs> God is trying to make us look. So I'm trying to be a better version of myself, not your old self. That you know, you don't need a better version of yourself. You just need a, a whole nother person, a different person. And I think we've got to know that uh, this 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 day that we can really uh, work through those dark rooms of our, of our lives. And I think uh, we. Uh, know that too much light, too much light. Uh, and I think it's, it's so important to think about this. Only after all the chemicals have done their work, <laughs> all after all the chemicals have done their work in the dark, then it's safe to expose the negative to the light. Uh, uh, that's coming at you. Even the words, the negative words, the nasty words, the looks, uh, the losses, the if it ain't one thing, it's another. All of that is part of the dark room. Uh, you got you, you can't expose the negatives to light uh, too early. <laughs> and see, some of us got some negatives. Anybody got negatives? Anybody want to share what's your negative? We don't want to share that, right? We got some negative things about us. All of us got 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 character flaws and personality traits that aren't just desirable. Somebody says, well, my husband like it. That's only because he's been with you a long time. He's used to it. But go bring that on a brand new man and he might not like it. You know, all of us got characteristic traits <laughs> and we got to understand that it's important to know that uh, we're growing in the dark. God is, is working on us through all of these things. No, no destined, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, I like to see life not as like reaching a destination, but more like going on a journey. God takes us through the dark room uh, to develop our spiritual lives. And as we pass through all these things, trials, sorrows, frustrations, I think the image of Christ now becomes produced in us. Then we're ready to be displayed in the light. I think too often we like to blame people for our circumstances, for our dark tunnels of despair and for why we're frustrated, for why we're happy. We're still blaming our mama, still blaming our husband. And, and though these may be secondary causes, I think we realize uh, that the hand of our heavenly father uh, sometimes momentarily shades the light away from our pathway. I think he graciously takes us through these experiences because he wants to provide us with the benefits of darkness. Have you ever thought about that? Sometimes there are benefits of being in a dark place. Sometimes you need to hide out a little bit. Uh, as David said, he'll hide me in the secret of his tabernacle in the shadow of his wings. It was good for David to be in a cave for a little while. Sometimes God will give us those cave time. All of us need a little bit of cave time sometimes. Sometimes we need that to remind us because we get too happy. We get too comfortable with God. We take his blessings for granted. And sometimes God will strip away all our little crutches and all our little dependencies on him to let us know that if we're going to make it in this life, we must be 100% dependent upon him to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And as I asked the question this morning uh, or oh, this earlier today, you know, if you're in God's dark room, uh, don't despair because I think God is developing some beauty, some Christ likeness within all of us. Uh, and, and I think my end game is I want to be displayed in his, in his eternal art gallery, you know. And so so don't seek to get back in the light too soon. Maybe God wanted you to be here. We always complain about where we are. I don't like my life. I don't like where I'm at in life. And I thought following God would give me certainty. Matter of fact, Abraham went out and I know where he was going. Read through Hebrews. These all died in faith, having not received the promises, but having seen them afar off. They were persuaded of them. They embraced them. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. Uh, and I think we won't get back into the light too soon when God has buried us. Uh, and I think it's so important for us to know this. I want, I want to use a, a few more analogies and I'm going to close to this. I, I think uh, what photographers know uh, is, is that in order for uh, in order in order to allow uh, light sensitive materials time to process, they have to develop in the dark. Light sensitive materials to process have to grow in the dark. I thought about this and this is about to be a tough statement. Some of us can't really handle the light. See, you can't, you can't, you can't 
halfway. Jesus never lets you be halfway lukewarm about him. You know, you're for me or you're against me. And, and, and you you say you don't like the dark place, but when you had a chance to really shine, you didn't shine. You know, you didn't really step out and embrace it and said, I am, as I said a few weeks ago, if, if the Lord offers healing, then why are so many of his people not healed? You know, if, 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 if he offers a whole heart, a whole hearted person, why aren't you still there? Somebody says, I'm in the dark, but, but God was trying to get you to shine and you, your light wasn't shining. It wasn't. You were probably leaving. nothing worse than expecting someone's light to shine uh, and, 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 it's, and it's dim. <laughs> you know, that, that's that's expecting, you know, 80 degrees outside and it rained, 80 degrees of sunshine and it's 30 degrees and cold. You know, sometimes our disappointment comes from an expectation. Have we ever thought that God is sometimes disappointed in the light that we give off? I'll wait. And sometimes he got to take you back in a dark place because <laughs> you ain't ready. I'm ready. I want my light to shine. You know, my light should shine forth from me. It should ooze from my being, from my spirit, from my countenance that truly I trust in God. Let your light shine. Don't let nobody dim your light. And, and, and listen, don't apologize because your light shine. Does my light offend you? <laughs> is my light making you nervous because I embrace it because I'm walking in the light as he is in the light and I have fellowship with him uh, and that's how I can stay above the fray and not drown in shallow water. You've got to make a conscious effort to walk in the light. Maybe it's that light. Maybe this little light of mine, you never let shine. You know, we learned that <laughs> in some of our first songs. I want to share a few things with you. Uh, to, to, before we go, I want you to know that destiny and purpose are birth in the darkness. Destiny and purpose are birthed in the darkness. I'm going to slow down right there so you can think about that. Destiny and purpose our birth in the darkness. <sighs> Somebody says, prove it. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a seed? Have you ever heard of a seed? Seeds have to be planted in the dark in order to grow. Um, I've had people in my life who tried to throw dirt on me, but they didn't realize I was a seed. I grow in the dirt. I grow in the dark. Matter of fact, the more dirt that gets thrown my way, the more growth you're gonna see, the more focus I am. A seed has to be planted in the dark. Not too many seeds are planted above ground, right? They gotta fall on good soil. Can't just be thrown on thorns. You know, the, the birds of the air come pick them up. They got to be planted. It needs light as well, though. It's a combination of dark and light to grow. If you got all light, 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 shine. I ain't never been through nothing. I, you, 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 you begin to think that you created that light. That light don't come from you. If you ever see a light in me, realize that light don't come from Sam. I don't have a light that bright to shine. My light is his light in me. See, we got that all interpreted. I can't create no light. Of course you can't create no light, boo-boo. That's why you're so defeated. You're trying to create your own light. You're trying to walk by your own strength, but his strength and his light, if it's in you, I guarantee you'll be where you ought to be tonight. Just for tonight. Somebody says, well, I, I got to turn this around for next week. Listen, you ain't got next week. You ain't got three days. Just be just be the best you can be for that day. You know, I'm an athlete and, and I, I got to tie everything to sports. And it's the mentality that we have. That's why I love the, some of the sports guys. We just got to win this game today. You got to do the right things that, that day for that day. Don't worry about two games down the road. Who is your opponent in front of you? And the biggest opponent that's always in front of you is always yourself. You know, I'm looking into a camera now, but when I look into the mirror every morning, I am my own biggest appoint, uh, uh, opponent, my mindset, how I think, how I view myself, how I view God, how I view life, how I view where I am in life. And some of us are defeated before we even leave out the door. Uh, we got the whole week tied up in mess and worry and fear. We got the whole, what is 2021 going to be like? Man, I don't even know. 
I don't even know. Uh, my dad's birthday is tomorrow. This time last year, I was planning to go down and and have have a, a, a I took him out for his birthday uh, for his 70th birthday. I didn't know that was gonna be his last one. You know, well, if I said, oh, I'm going to wait till I'm going to do it, I'll do it on the 75th or we'll do something for the 80th. You don't know. Certainty. Come on, y'all. We got it. Who taught us that being a Christian means God shows us everything and we understand everything and we're certain about everything. We walk. I'm sure about it. I'm sure about it. No, you're not. If you're like me, I got a whole lot of stuff up in the air, but I'm trusting God about it. I'm not certain about a lot of stuff. I don't know. Do I know how long I'm going to live? No. Do I know I'm going to have my health for 15 years? No. Do I know a lot of things about life? I don't know anything about it. Are we going to ever come out of a recession? No. I did a sermon at the beginning of the year. Come out. I don't know. Somebody says they want you to give the answers. That ain't my job to give the answers. God can give you the answers, but my job is just to, to talk with the word. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just trying to get through the day, y'all. And if my light can shine for the day, I've done my job. Destiny and purpose are birthed in the dark. The seed needs light, but first it needs darkness. It has to be in darkness before it gets the light. If a seed never gets buried in the dirt, if it never gets dirt thrown on it, it'll never sprout. And in order for the glory of a flower to emerge from the ground, it has to be taken out of the package. Some of y'all ain't even been taken out the package. You want God to use you, but you won't go in the dirt. You won't go in the ground. You won't go in the dark. You won't be covered. You won't be hidden. And you want God to use you in that cute little package on the shelf. It'll never sprout exposed to a dark place just for a season. God is so good. He'll put us in a dark. He put Joseph in a dark place for a season. He put David in a dark place for a season. He put his children of Israel in a dark place for a season. He put Elijah and Nehemiah in a dark place for a season. And sometimes he covered them with stinking manure and soil and darkness. Uh, and, and after a while, <laughs> with a little bit of watering uh, and a light, uh, all these things work together and something beautiful grows out of the dirt, something that can be harvested, something that can be digested. And God is just that good. He creates life in the darkness of a mother's womb. Y'all remember that? Starts off as a seed, grows for nine months in pitch black. <laughs> I don't remember what it was like in my mother's womb, do you? But that's what they tell us. It was pitch black. And uh, just before the baby is born, the mother begins to experience those birthing pains and she begins to push the baby, the seed out of the darkness into the light. And ladies, those who have birthed a child know why contractions are called birthing pains. You know, it's in the midst of pain and the absence of light that glory is about to spring forth. <laughs> glory from, comes from a, a word meaning splendor, brightness, and majesty. And you know, when you hold that baby in your hand, uh, ladies, it, isn't it worth it? The nine months and the morning sickness and the pains, isn't it worth it when you hold your bundle of, of, of joy and the child is healthy? Is, isn't it worth it? And it took a little time to being an ink, some of you may be in an incubation period, and, and and God is trying to birth something and holy in you, but you keep trying to abort the mission. And I think it's so important to know that that the concept of pain is 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 necessary to be shaped and fastened and to be molded in the in the blast furnace of trials to be what God wants you to be in His kingdom. The dark places of suffering are the pathway to glory and life. And I know this isn't a popular topic, but there's truth. We want Christianity without suffering. See, see tonight, you need to know we all deal with issues. I deal with issues and other people do. You've been sitting up there in your dark room, crying over your issues as if you're the only one that are going through them. We all go through issues. That's why we're gathering in this place to pray for one another. But which would you rather do? Would you really uh, just rather endure life tolerate what you have, suffer through it with nothing. Some of us suffer with nothing to show for it. See, that, that in, in the funny, when you go to the gym and when you pick up the heavy weight and you, oh, you push it, you suffer through the workouts, but you want something to show for it. There's nothing like going to the gym. There's a lot of people who work out and they have nothing to show for it. You know why? Because they don't know how to do it. <laughs> they not. They don't know how to do it because there's a part that, see, part of, part of getting the results you want is not the breaking down of the muscles, but how do you build it up? There's a rest. There's a nutrition. There's a stretching. Uh, there's a diet. 
There, there's a timing in between. Those things are just as much important than what you pick up. So I think, how do you, how do you handle the disappointments of your life? How do you handle the heavy weight of your life? Paul says, I'm more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. And I think when trials come my way, uh, I would rather line up myself with the word of God. Uh, and like the apostle Paul says, I fought a good fight. In the dark, I fought. I, I, I kicked and I screamed <laughs> and I was frustrated. I went back to the drawing board and I doubted sometimes that I kept the faith. I kept pressing uh, forward. I kept trudging ahead uh, through the quicksands of life and I fought a good fight and I kept my faith and I finished the course. I'm not defeated. I, I've been hard pressed on every side, yet I'm not crushed. I've been persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I've been cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Uh, and God is for me. So who in the world can be against me? And I'm not trying to declare uh, difficulties over you tonight or just say, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that God has you in this dark place or diminish the dark place that you're in. I'm not saying that. Paul says we'd have troubles. First Thessalonians chapter three and verse number three. But here's how he said we handle them. He says uh, that, that we have to know. We have to know that these hardships uh, are are certain to come in all of our lives. Uh we all destined for issues and hardships uh, in our lives, but God is up to something in the middle of our issues. And that's how he makes beautiful things. I think it takes pain to push forward the glory of God and his ways are different than ours. You know, uh, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of manure makes flowers beautiful. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> when you buried in crap, you can grow then. Somebody don't know about that. Somebody, you would stop complaining if you actually said, I'm developing, I'm developing, I'm developing, I'm developing, I'm developing, I'm developing, I'm developing. I ain't immune to this. I'm developing. Trials gonna come my way. I'm developing. Talk about them if you want to. I'm developing. I'm struggling right now. Uh, I'm developing. I've been through a divorce. Nasty. I'm developing. I lost my mama. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm in a process. I'm on a journey. I'm down a path. I'm on a course. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm developing. I ain't there yet. God has a work on me. And you make your trials about him and not about you. I'm developing. God, what do you want me to be? God, there must be something that you want me to see. God, I know I'm not there yet. I, I, I'm still too sensitive with people. I'm still too evil in my heart. I still say things that I should say. I still cuss people out on a dime. I still hold grudges. I'm still unforgiving. I'm still bitter about what you took from me. I'm developing. I'm developing. I'm developing. And when God develops us, he keeps us in the dark room, the dark room. And I want you to know tonight, whatever's developed in the dark, just like the Bible, whatever's in the dark will come to the light. Whatever's developed in the, in the dark will shine in the light. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's almost like you've been proven and tested. And, and now it, one of my favorite movies is, is 300 and uh, about the Spartans and 300 Spartans defended Ther Thermopylae against King Xerxes. Uh, and the Spartans had something about them, you know, never fear, never back down. You know, they were willing to die for a cause that, that they believed in uh, and, uh, and, and and even how they were developed and shaped to be Spartan. Never surrender, never retreat. And we get pumped up about that. But, man, that ought to be every Christian's motto. I'm telling somebody tonight, don't surrender and don't retreat. Don't run from you. don't have to run from anything with God's on your side. God got you covered. God got you protected. You might be anointed, don't even realize it. Uh, and, and I find strength in the Old Testament from reading those individuals like David. Uh, Bible says things are written for time are written for our learning. And we through comfort of the scripture, through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And I got hope tonight that God is still working on me. Now, I don't want him to make me to be uh, the person that you need to be. I'm not trying to be your standards. I want to be free to be me. Uh, in Christ, no longer tied by what anybody thinks about me and their perception of me. And, you know, you what what you think of me is is none of my business. <laughs> you know, my, my reputation resides in your mind. My identity is who God knows that I am. So I, so it's, it's foolish and it's vanity to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you think about me. I want my light to shine because God has a greater uh, purpose uh, in, in our lives. And so 
uh, when you think about that flower tonight, think about that seed that's being planted and think think about the baby uh, that that grows in its mother's womb and, and, and be reminded tonight that you're still developing in the dark rooms of of, of your life. God takes those those negatives and <laughs> gives it the right exposure. Uh, and some of our negative, we were expo we we expose a lot of negatives to the world. Y'all realize that that uh, that um, our job is really not to be the type of person that pleases everybody else, but it's really to be the type of person that pleases God. For the scriptures say, when a man's ways please God, even his enemies are at peace with him. Uh, and they may not like what you do and like you, but really, can they speak bad about you? You know. Uh, there's, we're always going to have personality differences. There's some people that you just don't gel with, but, but can they speak bad about you, about what you said or what you did or what you stand for, uh, tonight? So I pray, uh, that, that, that we are developing and know tonight, uh, that, that these dark rooms that you find yourself in and think about it, y'all, we're going to be in and out of these dark rooms our whole entire lives. So don't think just because you're out of a dark, sometimes God needs to take us back in because we get beside ourselves uh, and he's developing us. I'm a seed. I grow. Keep bringing the dirt. I ain't going to quit. I'm a survivor. I'm a fighter. I don't know. I don't think I know how to quit. Personally, I don't know how to quit. The more dirt, I, I'm going to continue to grow. God's going to water and, and and I won't let anybody, I'm not going to let anybody break my spirit, take my joy uh, and and it, it happens in life, but Satan wants that to happen. Satan wants my spirit to be broken. He wants my joy to be taken. But uh, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do it. Dr. King said, "No one can ride your back unless it's bent." We've been giving Ray too many piggyback rides. Get off of my back unless you my baby girls. You ain't getting on my back. Stop riding my back. We let everybody ride our backs, and it's bent. We give a pig piggyback rides to everybody, and then wonder why we got scoliosis. You can't do that. You got to get them people off your back. Sometimes you got to get your own self off of your back. Uh, you give them the back. You giving them the targets to hit. And being Christ-like don't mean continue to give them targets to hit. We ought to be wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Stop letting people run over you. God don't get no glory from that. What he really gets glory is when you can be assertive. Jesus looked at the Pharisees. Jesus looked at the Pharisees and he said, uh, you hypocrites. He looked at them. He told them who they were, exactly what they were. And I think the problem with many of us, we have a hard problem because you can't even tell people the truth. You tiptoe around people because you scared they won't like you. Paul says, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Your real friends won't run from you and shine you because you tell them the truth. I pray tonight. That's part of all of our growth process that we're able. It's instead of saying this person keeps destroying me and hurting, tell them the truth. And, and and leave the rest to God. Uh, thank God tonight. Thank y'all for it being a, a lovely audience. I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there uh, because I'm trying to, uh, to 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 grow in the dark. And uh, now watch this. I, I just thought about something real quick. Y'all know I like my illustration. Y'all hang with me just a second. Can y'all see me? I'm right here. Get that light up. All right. <laughs> can y'all can y'all see me? It, it, I don't look the same. I don't look the same in the dark. Matter of fact, I don't. If I, I don't look. <laughs> I don't look the same uh, in the dark. The quality of, of the image uh, becomes. Uh, uh, clearly, but you know what? When when you're in the dark, um, I was thinking about this today. I don't like dark rooms. You, most of the time, people think if you're sitting, the only thing that saved me is a light from my computer screen. But most of the time, people think that when you're sitting uh, in the dark, that there's something uh, something wrong with you. But I'm gonna tell you, when you're sitting in the dark, don't complain, don't fuss, don't gripe, don't play. Like tone it down a little bit. You know, some some people. Or God is working on them and you full time, but then you wonder why he won't get you in the dark. You know, have you ever been seen those movies where somebody's afraid, somebody's trying to find them? And what they do is they turn off all the lights and they say, stop whispering. You know, I hate to play hide and go seek with some people because they're talking in the dark and we're trying to hide from whatever's on the outside. Maybe God's got you in the dark and he wants you to get in your room, sit down somewhere and stop talking so much. He don't want to hear what you're trying to say. It ain't going to help. 
in any way. He, he, he's keeping you from danger that's on the outside. Of course, you don't look like yourself in the dark. You don't feel like yourself in the dark. You don't sound like the day, self in the dark, but you've been talking too much. You think you're so certain about who God is and what he's doing. And the truth of the matter is, like most of us, sometimes we just don't know. And it's okay not to know. Just be quiet. Go sit in your dark room and just say, I'm developing. <laughs> I'm developing. You know, I probably should have started on like this. You only see a silhouette or image of me. I'm like a shadow of myself. And sometimes we look like this in life, right? This is where I am. You see, you might see my five head, you know, you might see my teeth uh, or you might see, you know, ears. But but uh, this this is this is how life looks sometimes. Uh, and, and every person that's in a dark place is not there because they did something wrong. So stop being happy and stop trying to say why somebody's suffering or struggling. Maybe God is just still working on them. So when you see me in this place right here, where I don't look quite like myself and my tone's not clear and I'm a shadow of myself and I'm whispering a little bit, don't tell me, why are you whispering? It's, it's danger on the outside. God has hired me. Well, you don't look like yourself. That's because I'm going through some stuff. You don't sound like yourself. Well, I don't really have a lot to say right now because of what I'm dealing with. And I, I don't really have no explanation to why I'm dealing with this, but I'm trusting in God. And listen, hold on a little while longer. I ain't going to always be right here. It ain't going to always be dark right here because I believe darkness is seasonal. It's not meant to be this way. Uh, and the reason why I like the cold that's coming, because I know that when it hits June, it's going to be 135. So I'll take the cold right now because just like mountaintops and valleys uh, and the life swings on a pendulum, season, good seasons, bad seasons, seasons of dark, and you sit in the dark long enough and wait. And when you're in the dark, get out of the camera. When you wait, then it gets a little better. Y'all see that? I, I'm I'm, come, I'm I'm a little better now, y'all. Uh, I'm beginning to grow. It's not quite. Uh, where I started off, there's not quite the dark place. Again, sometimes your life looks like this. It's not quite as dark uh, as as it was, but you ought to smile more. You ought to be able to start talking about it a little more. You ought to have some lessons that you learned from that place. Uh, you ought to feel better about seeing yourself, even though others others can't see you as good as, as you think they will, but you can't see yourself as well. So I'm looking at at, at the screen, I'm beginning to see myself. And then after a while, this is a season of life, right? Not quite dark, not quite light, various shades, enough to see myself, but not the image that I want to be. I'm not where I desire to be, but God is still working on me. And after a while, if I keep letting him work on me, uh, the seeds continue to be watered uh, and God continue to work on me after a while. <laughs> I'm gonna pack. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pop on the screen, but when I pop back up, I'm not gonna be like, "Hey, y'all, I'm back. What's up?" It, it'll probably be more like, it'll probably be more of a quiet spirit because the dark places change you, you know. And and, and you'll 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 you won't talk about when God works on you. You ain't gonna talk about all you, all you've been through. You'll start talking about all He taught you and all that He brought you out of your your, your glory. Your glory is now his glory. See, that's why God can't use some of us because he can't get no glory from you. If he can't get no glory from you, he ain't going to use you. And I pray tonight that you would let him work on you. Uh, and, and it's going to be through trial uh, and error, error that you're too cool, you're too comfortable, you gotta, you're too certain, too cool, too comfortable, too certain for God to use you. God don't need people who are too cool to use. He needs people he can send wherever he's sent. He needs people who don't mind being uncomfortable. He needs people to say, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I follow you. And I've been through hell and back. I, I've been in it. 
I've been in the dark. I've been lonely. I've been frustrated. I've been disappointed. I've stood in the cemetery. I've been all these places, but I've emerged like a beautiful butterfly from the cocoon. Uh, the light that you see in my eyes is is just a result of the suffering. You know, the, the tears uh, that I cried have turned into a, turned from tears in my eyes to a to a sparkling in my eyes. You know, he's turned my mourning uh, into dancing and my sorrow into laughter. I praise him because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I begin to celebrate my trials and my struggles as part of the process that God taken me from who I was, a person who was, was emotionally fragile and emotionally unstable to a person who's spiritually secure. And when the next one comes, I'm better equipped to handle it because I begin to say victoriously, if God brought me through that, if God can bring me through that, he definitely can get me through this. And I, I should say this every week and I'm done. Like the three Hebrew boys. I said it. Oh, I was reading that again. Three Hebrew boys, they came out. The Bible says they didn't even smell like smoke. I threw something on the grill Sunday and I smelled like wood. It was in my clothes. Uh, it was in my beard. It was in my skin. It was on my watch. Uh, if you get near a fire, you're going to smell like smoke. You don't have to go in the fire. That's being burned. But if you get near a fire, you're going to smell like smoke. The smoke is the residue from the fire. He said they were in the fire and didn't even smell like smoke. And what this shows me is if you are trusting God and if God got you, God will bring you out of something and you won't even look like you've been in it. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm done tonight. I can't fool with y'all no longer. He'll bring you out of it and you won't even look like you've been in it. That's why stop trying to look like you tore down and wore down. God don't get no glory from that. God gets the glory. He said, I done been through it. Girl, you look good. I know. Won't he do it? <laughs> it ain't because I feel like it. I look much better than I feel. But that's how God brought. I don't even smell like smoke. Don't even smell like smoke. Don't even look like smoke. Been in the fire, but you can't even tell it to the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done tonight. Can't deal with y'all no more tonight because I want to have church and ain't nobody even with me tonight. God will bring you out of that fire and won't even smell like smoke. All because you didn't bow down when the fire was heated seven times hotter. Shadrach, Meshach, and Baal said, put us in the fire. God is able to deliver us. Put me in the fire. Throw the dirt on. I'm going to grow anyway. Talk about me. I'm going to grow anyway. Leave me. I'm going to grow anyway because I'm a seed. That's what I do. I grow in the dark, dark room, developing. That's what God's doing for all of us. I'm done tonight, y'all. I hope, I don't know if this is what you wanted tonight, but this is what the Spirit wanted me to say. Thank you guys for joining in with us, no matter where you are. Uh, and maybe tonight, if you can share on your way out, trying to do this to make it interactive, share how God has is developing you. Uh, he's developing all of us. We're encouraging one another. Now. I want to encourage you as you encourage me. Please, pre please pray for me. And I'm praying for you as well as we continue to strive uh, to do the Lord's will in, in our lives. We smile not because everything's good, but we smile because he's good. And when as long as he's on the throne, we know things are working together. Uh, and all these things that are in our orbit, orbit sometimes they cause us a falter along the way. But I just have no choice but to be optimistic because uh, I know the only thing that I do know is that God is good and he's gracious and he's merciful to all of us. He will sustain us. And I pray that he would keep all of us in this time of uncertainty, in this time of, of COVID, that, that the church would experience a growth in the dark. Uh, and we're, the church is in a dark period right now, but we're going to grow. Watch when we come out of the ground. Watch it. I, I'm telling you, watch when we come out of the ground. We're going to grow and we're going to sprout and we're going to turn around and thank God for keeping us in the dark. God bless you all. Love you all. Uh, I, I like some of your comments that you ha you have. Um, and um, God is trying to, 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 to burn away the impurities from our lives so we can be made in his image. He wants us to be like him. He wants us to have a heart like him. Thank God for hard work. Remember, hard work is hard work. Hard work is hard work. Thank God for it. And, and we got to do it. Let us, let us, um, what's the song I want to sing? Sweet is the song I'm singing today. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed. Trouble and sorrow 
have vanished away, have vanished away. I have been, I have been redeemed. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed by love divine, by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine, Christ is mine. All to him, all to him. I now resign, I now resign. I have been, I have been redeemed. Great is my joy, great is my joy. As onward I go, onward I go. I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, all the way homeward, my praises shall flow, my praises shall flow, I have been, I have been redeemed, I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed, by love divine, by love divine, glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine, Christ is mine, all to to him, all to him, I now resign, I now resign, I have been, I have been redeemed, raised is my joy, precious indeed is my Savior to me, I'm redeemed, I hope y'all sing with me, I'm redeemed, happy and glory, that someday I shall be, someday I shall be, I I have been, I have been redeemed, and I'm redeemed, I'm redeemed by love divine, by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, Christ is mine, Christ is mine. All to him, all to him, I now resign, I now resign, I have been I have been redeemed. Here we go, Shan. I've sinned against you, Lord. I admit that I've done wrong. Well, then I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, I'm on my way back home. Well, and I'm down on my bended knee and begging you to save this soul of mine. So, oh, please forgive me, Jesus, Lord, and try me one more time. Oh, when I sinned against you, Lord, Lord, I admit that I've done wrong. Well, and I'm just like the prodigal son. Lord, I'm on my way back home. Oh, I'm down on my bended knee, begging you to save this soul of mine. Lord, and please forgive me, Jesus. Lord, and try me one more time by request. I'm gonna hide, hide behind, hide behind the mile, mountain. I'm gonna hide, and I'll hide behind the mountain. And I'm gonna hide, hide behind. And I'll hide behind the mountain, and I'm going where the chilly, chilly, chilly wind don't blow. Oh, oh, you know I heard that G Jesus is Jesus. He's my mountain, and I know that Jesus. And my Jesus, he's a mountain, and I know that Jesus, and my Jesus, he's a mountain, said I'm going where the chilly, chilly, chilly wind, going where the chilly, chilly, chilly wind, going where the chilly, chilly, chilly wind, don't blow. Oh, don't. I still have joy. Last one. Lord, I still have joy. After all the things I've been through, Lord, I still have 
joy. Oh Lord, I still have joy. Oh Lord, I still have joy. And after all the things I've been through, Lord, I still have. And I've got some love and I still have love. Oh Lord, I still have love. After all the things I've been through, Lord, I still have. And I've got some peace and I still have peace. Oh Lord, I still have peace. After all the things I've been through, Lord, I still have. Cause he brought me out and he brought me out. Oh Lord, he brought me out. And after all the things I've been through, Lord, he brought me. That's why I still have a love I still have. Love, no, I still have love. And after all the things I've been through, and after all the things I've been through, and after all the things I've been through, Lord, I still have love. Yeah, yeah, I think that's all of our testimony. After all of the things I've been through, still got it. Ha <laughs> ha! Still got that fruit of the spirit. Devil didn't give it to me, and he sure can't take it away. What a way to end the night. Love all of you all. God bless you all. I say that sincerely, the most sincere manner as I can. Let us pray. Monica, I'm gonna replay that song uh, that you had. That'll be our going, going out song uh, that you asked to play on replay, and then we're going to... Uh, we're going to be dismissed and, and move on away. Y'all, ble- y'all ble- God bless you all. Let's, I pray that you all have a, a wonderful week. And um, and uh, we're just going to keep developing. We're going to keep developing. We're going to encourage each other um, through this through this journey. Um, God put us here for that, to encourage each other. All right, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness. You allow us to be able to rejoice tonight in the midst of dark places. We know that you have a plan to grow us and develop us and to shape us into your image. Father, you must remove all the impurities of from our hearts and from our souls, all those cancers of our of our spirit, Father, that uh, take over our, our, our spiritual bodies and uh, allow us to have a view that's distorted. Instead of seeing, seeing you for who you are, Father, we begin to focus on the circumstances and the storms of life that rage around us. Father, we pray that you would give us the peace of God, which allows us to be calm and still in, in the dark places, knowing that you're at work, knowing that just like Joseph was in a pit and in a prison, you still had a plan for him. Just like your children wandered in the desert, you still had a plan for them. Like David in a cave, you still had a plan for him. Or your only son, 40 days in the wilderness in a dark place, you had a plan for him. Father, we know that in life we'll experience a lot of dirt, a lot of negativity, but may we let you and let patience have its per- perfect work on us that we can be whole and complete and lack nothing. I pray for all those tonight that have prayer requests and whatever prayers and the concerns they have on their hearts. May we leave them uh, in this space and leave them at your feet. May we leave here tonight strengthened and, and more more not only just optimistic, but more informed and more purposed to let you do what you do and more purpose to trust in you and more purpose to rejoice and more purpose to give you the glory wherever we find ourselves, that we may bloom wherever we are in life, giving you all the glory and the honor. We thank you. And may we go on our way rejoicing tonight from having an encounter with your word. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray tonight. Amen. Amen. See you guys on Sunday. I'm done with my series. So I'm going to be on something totally, totally, totally different Sunday. And I'm thinking about next Wednesday, same time, thinking about talking about uh, alignment. What does that mean spiritually? Getting spiritual alignment, you know, like your car. Sometimes you need rotation, rotation and balance and alignment uh, in, your, in, in your spiritual vehicle. And I might have a guest with me. Uh, 
uh, next week. So we'll see if, if he can confirm with me. So we got to look forward to have a good conversation with that. If not, we're going to go either way. So God bless y'all. Love y'all. Monica, this is the song you asked me to play. It was, it's a good one. It's by Greg Owens, and uh, it's All My Trials. Of course, written by Sylvia, the late, great Sylvia Rose. Not the late, great, but Sylvia Rose. I like this, this version of it. Y'all stay warm. My my Tay House folks. Hey Audrey, thank you. Monica, that'll be eight dollars. Hey, brother Lee. Got Frank Tori in the house. <laughs> You're right, brother Needy. I appreciate it. He is. I try to stay away from that tonight. So this, I'm one and done, and I have a song. I have this song go off. I'm out. I got a ton of homework, guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, so, that's thoughtful. Thank you. Man, I bet it's cold in Michigan while we're trying to complain. Just Veronica. T, I like that bass in this. You know, I had, we had some chili Sunday. I think I almost said chili beans. <laughs> chili beans. Edward Bishop, what's up, buddy, man? Edward Bishop in the house. It's been a long time, man, 20 plus years. Is it in the negatives? Negative up there. Oh, we got some of that next week. Texas, Texas. Hey, LaDonna, how you doing? Thank you. Tell all the family hello. Thank you for dropping in on us. I can't take a step without you. I can't live a life without you. I can't live a life without you. I can't live my wife without you. I can't live right without you. I can't take a step without you. I can't live 
Hang around. I got one more. Oh, I got a phone. Just in case y'all don't know, that's called Fourier Studio. That is not that is Fourier Studio. No, I'm just playing. I'm not going to drop the food. I'm not going Remember this one? Well, how sweet it is. 
Sorry about that. one I got a bonus material then we'll go for real.
All right. That's Foyer Studios. For those who, uh, if you want to see a bunch of songs that we were singing there, just go to Facebook, type in hashtag Foyer Studios. So you can go back and see all of them that we ever did in there. We got more coming uh, now. So uh, wait, wait. We got a lot of uh, uh, songs that we're going to do, continue to do. That's just a fun play. We like the acoustics in there. So we just like to get together and sing and, and we just get random people. I wish I had thought about it uh, before the last, for 2018 or 2019 or whatever, because we had so many great singers come through from musicals and the homecomings. And, and you know, it's just a way of kind of capturing the time. Uh, but anyway, y'all have a wonderful evening. And I'm going to go ahead and log off. And y'all be blessed. Good, have a good night. I might play some more of them next week. <laughs> Amen.